Hello and welcome. Let's talk tabletop. Today our topic comes from a curious commentator. He said, for a topic I'd recommend low-level treasures. And yes, um, some people, like myself, place a lot of emphasis on, uh, on loot, on treasure, on money in uh, in D&D, especially nowadays with super popular games like Diablo, where half of the point is picking up loot and killing things, or or uh, MMOs, where you're always going after that daily grind chest or whatever. It's kind of bled into D&D just a little bit. And some people play heavy RP stories, some people play games where you never more you never have more than a hundred gold pieces to your name and I sit there and squirm the whole time because half the fun of D&D &D, to me is going shopping for getting all the cool toys and things so you can ask any number of DMs that you know I always complain that we don't have enough treasure we don't have enough money I like loot give me the loot <laughs> um, but yes let's talk about low-level treasure um, let's break it down first. What is low level in D&D? Is that just level 1? Is that just level 2? Statistically speaking, low level D&D is level 1 to level 4. Now why is that? Because when you look in the equipment books, what do you see? You see plus 1 swords, plus 2 swords, plus 3, plus 4, and then the book kind of stops at plus five weapons, plus five armors, etc., etc. It doesn't really build anything higher than that unless you go into like the epic level handbook. By and large, the standard like quote unquote best stuff is plus five enchanted weapons, enchanted armor, etc., etc. So if you divide that amongst 20 levels, level one through level four will be plus one items, right? So we can just just to kind of give us a range to work with to, for the benefit of this conversation would be that low level D&D &D is level 1 to level 4. So um, there are the bog standard answers, the, the statistical expectations of uh, plus 1 items, you know, plus 1 swords, plus 1 spears, you know, plus one chain mail, plus one shields, etc., etc. Plus one items in general are kind of expected early on in the levels. So, you know, it's the masterwork items. It's the it's a plus one item, so it can have an enchantment on it. That kind of stuff. Stuff that's worth like five thousand gold or less, or ten thousand gold or less. You um, there's like a margin. Uh, before the prices start shooting up exponentially. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the first category, it's even statted into, like, monsters and stuff uh, in some of the blurbs for uh, how to correctly balance a monster encounters that they assume past a certain level you've got plus one weapons or plus one armor or or X amount of resistance to this or that because of the gear you've got, especially... Uh, with the non-magic classes like fighters who are almost strictly defined by their gear. So you have to be sure to drop extra, extra stuff for them so they stay relevant because, as we all know, fighters are squared, but wizards are quadratic, you know, the further they go on into the levels. So um, the first category of low-level treasure is just plus one weapons and plus one armor. Now... The second category is a little broader, it's your skill-based items, which are, for the low levels, uh, anything that will add to your skills, whether that be riding, or sneaking, jumping, you know, any, any of the stuff in your skill column, uh, plus one, two, plus four. Now, again, working amongst the 20 levels, you can give one for each level, because a standard challenge for a skill is 10 plus your level. So it's a 50-50 shot at level 1 to do da-da-da because the DC to do it is 11. So if you have, you know, a plus 1 item, it's that much more sure that you're going to do it. Let's just use, like, sneaking boots as an example. You could find, you know, between level 1 and level 4, you could find, like, plus 3 
you know, you know, boots of sneaking plus three. So they don't add to your armor, they just make you sneakier by three. So in the low level range, you know, finding a plus four, you know, boots of sneaking plus four would be this amazing epic item that you'd be so far ahead of the bell curve, you know, you would never have to worry about sneaking hardly ever again unless you throw one that's you're like, ah, damn it, you trip over your shoelaces, your boots of sneaking plus four have been your undoing. Oh no. <laughs> Or or one of my favorites, one of my favorites, you know, we always try to make a, a huge, like, big deal joke whenever somebody rolls really bad, uh, uh, rolls a one, we'll try to make the biggest, nastiest joke we can. The worst one we ever did, I think, at my table, uh, or one of the worst ones, was when my friend Daniel, who had built, like, this, this private investigator rogue, he was basically a, a perception one trick pony. He would walk into a room, perception plus 15, blah de blah de blah, but you still fail if you roll a one. And he had these magic glasses who would of course give him like a plus three or a plus four or whatever it happened to be. There was He was a low level character too. So he puts these magic glasses on and he rolls a one and of course he wanders into this room. It's in like a haunted hotel, I think it was. He puts these magic glasses on, he wanders in, he's like, perception on this room. He rolls a one. Oh my God, where'd the floor go? What am I standing on? Ah, the glasses, they do nothing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, the second category is, uh, is your skill-based items. Next, um, as far as low-level treasures go, you want to look at pricey, mundane items. Things that aren't magic, but they're still expensive. Like, uh, I think it's in Pathfinder. It might be in D&D &D as well, I don't know. In Pathfinder, uh, a spyglass, you know, like the, the thing like sailors and explorers use to see far away when they're traveling. A spyglass is like a thousand gold. And, uh, and I remember seeing that, and I was like, it's a thousand gold to see far away, and it's just, you don't expect, like, items like, it's like, you know, grappling hook, rope, you know, hammer, pythons, crowbar, and over to the side, it's like one gold, two silver, three silver, and then near the bottom, it's like a thousand gold. What is that? A spyglass? Jesus, Okay. But yeah, if you run a bandit encounter, maybe one of those bandits, you know, it's a low-level enemy, whatever it happens to be, a kobold, a goblin, a bandit, any one of those could be carrying a spyglass, and that's a quick thousand gold for the party. Or if they want to hang on to it and use it, it's fine. But uh, that's a quick thousand gold right there, and that's not a magic item. So, um, what else? You, you run into other things like horses, which could be worth a couple of hundred gold, uh, vehicles like carts, or uh, um, stuff you could recover from like, you know, a bandit camp. They had seven horses and two carts of supplies. You know, you take all that back and you sell it, it's worth money. Or if they want to keep it, they can. That's still loot. Um, what else? You can run into to basic commodities like like metal bars. You know, I, I don't remember what campaign it was in. We were we were doing a lot of undead, a lot of werewolves, a lot of things like that. They kept running into like bars of silver because uh, the local blacksmiths knew what local heroes and local monster hunters wanted was silver weapons. So now and then you would run across just these caches of like chests full of silver bars and you know how much is a silver bar worth I don't know but you know it depends on the system but uh, those are always exciting because that's a big chunk of change or that's something you can hand off to a blacksmith and say here here's ten bars of silver make us some silver weapons and they mark the price way the hell down because they brought their own materials and chaining off of that you know suppose you have an alchemist in your party and he's like okay I'm gonna look for herbs while we travel just in case and you can throw like 3d10 and say you know okay you find 324 gold pieces worth of herbs so instead of having to go buy supplies to brew his own potions you know hey he's got you can subtract 324 gold from your next potion make or whatever it happens to be it doesn't have to all be 
weapons and armor and, and like magic shit because there's so much stuff that costs money that your players are gonna want if you don't feel like just handing them gold or, or dropping a chest of 10,000 gold in front of them you can give them things that are really useful that will come in handy later or that they if they're creative they can really get behind like um, like items that deal in absolutes if you put an item that deals in absolutes you know you're not gonna find them in the book just make one up uh, creative players will always find the best ways to use them like the uh, like the cheaters coin you know it's just a gold piece that always lands heads up it's worth one gold you know you you can find a smooth talking rogue or a smooth talking bard that'll make a good use of that or um, what else did we make up we had the eternal shield it was just a plus one shield but it couldn't be bent or broken or or uh, damaged by acid or anything like that it was completely indestructible. It wasn't any better than any other shield. It was just it couldn't be destroyed. Creative players will find very interesting things to do with stuff like that. Or um, we had another one. What was it? The perfect dagger. Uh, the perfect dagger couldn't miss, but it could only ever deal one damage. And that doesn't sound like much until you find a character that specializes in poisons, and then suddenly the perfect dagger is a wonderful thing. So, um, items that deal in absolutes are also very interesting to do. Just make sure you really think about the, uh, the consequences of them before you hand them out. Uh, what else? You can run into stuff that needs appraising. You know, you can, before you start your campaign, you know, look at everybody's character sheet. Does nobody have appraising? Well, hey, you've got a new category of treasure to hand out. It's like, okay, you find a handful of gems. What are they worth? I don't know. And they're like, I appraise them. Oh, wait, I don't have appraising. You know, Fengar, do you have appraising? No. Silver Wind, do you have appraising? No. Oh, we gotta wait until we get back to town to get all these gems appraised. And that'll just drive them crazy. How much are those gems worth? How much are those gems worth? And they'll be really excited when they get back to town or when they get back to the city or wherever they find a jeweler or somebody who can appraise these because that's a big question mark sitting in their bag and they can't wait to get a hold of that. That could be 50 gold. That could be 1,500 gold. They don't know. So uh, stuff that needs appraising, especially if you don't have somebody with ranks in appraise in your party. That's always a good category to use. Um, those are kind of the main ones for me. I mean, if you, if you want to go, again, like statistically speaking, treasure from level 1 to level 4 is worth anywhere from like 1,200 gold down. So that covers like your basic rings of protection, your plus one weapons, your plus one armors. But try to get creative with it. You know, hand out raw materials like your metal bars, your herbs, your, you know, the shit that they can't use directly. You know, hand out gems. They don't know how much it's worth. They don't have a praise. Make it interesting enough that uh, they'll be thinking about it. They'll be wondering about it. Or or stuff that they can only use at a certain time, like give them coupons, you know, like, what is this? It's a coupon for maid service for two weeks. What am I going to do with that? I was like, well, you're going to have a maid for two weeks. It summons a maid from the ether. I don't know. <laughs> they might like that. Or, or um, you know, a deed to a house. You know, and you might say, oh, Tony, what if they turn around and just sell the house? That could be tens of thousands of gold. It would, it would misbalance the game. Have you ever tried to sell a house? It doesn't happen instantly. It could happen months later. It could happen years later. You might just say, oh, there's not much of a housing market right now. You've just got this house now. Fuck. Well, at least we've got a good home base now. Ugh. You know, just, just unusual things that you know maybe they don't know what to do with like if they they could find small animals or small like like wind up toys that the gnomes have made or different things that don't have monetary value uh but make sure it's interesting even at low levels because you know you get up into like staffs and and storm orbs and 
swords that catch on fire. You need to have stuff besides weapons, besides armor, and 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 besides like raw money. You really got to think about keeping it fresh, keeping it interesting. You need like nine categories of things. I've talked about how to make dragon's hordes before where you like number a paper one to a hundred and you know like number one is gold, number two is gems, number three is is like silver and copper pieces. What are you gonna do with the other 97 slots? You know, so you gotta really think about something they're going to want that's not going to misbalance the game. Because if you hand off like a flame brand or whatever, the, the sword that catches fire, you know, and well, anything that catches fire honestly could break a campaign, <laughs> depending on who you hand it to. But uh, make sure it's something they're going to wonder about, like, like a gem. That they like a handful of gems that they they don't know how much it's worth or or something that like a puzzle box. What's in the puzzle box? You don't know. But if you try to break it open, you might break whatever's inside. So they gotta work on that for a week. Or what was that? What was that one thing we handed off that one time? Oh, it was the the book of good living. Yes. It, <laughs> I don't remember what campaign it was in. We found a book of good living, and whomsoever should read the book of good living would get like five extra hit points forever, which made it very valuable. And you know, it would teach you how to eat better, how to exercise, you know, all that like mundane crap. But you would change your, the course of your life just a little bit by by living healthy, living living the best life you can live, and blah de blah de blah. But on your character sheet, you would get like five more hit points forever. And that was just a great item to have. You know, make shit up. It doesn't have to all be perfectly balanced or in the books or anything like that. Um, just uh, make sure you wander beyond the plus one weapons, the plus one armors, the plus whatever skill items. Make shit up. You'd be surprised how unusual or how weird things that, that your players will just love. Or again, items that deal in absolutes, like the Eternal Shield. I think the last time I handed out the Eternal Shield, they were in like a tomb or something, and you know, one of the, they tripped a trap and like all the doors were like sliding closed with these giant uh, slabs of stone. So our fighter runs over and he props the Eternal Shield up. The Eternal Shield can't break or bend, so it stops this gigantic slab of stone so they don't get trapped in the room and they escaped easily. They can't get the Eternal Shield back because it's under 50,000 goddamn tons of pressure, but hey, it got them out safely. You never know what a creative player is going to do with an item like that, so... Um, come up with like 10 or 15 things, whether they're in the book or not, that, uh, that you can sprinkle through the campaign that don't have stats on them. And you'll, uh, you'd be surprised what creative players can do. So that's really all I can think of when it comes to like low level treasures. Uh, like I said, the main categories were plus one items, uh, pricey mundane items, uh, crafting materials. Uh, plus one to plus four skill items, and then uh, creative weird stuff, uh, items that deal in absolutes, things like that. So keep that in mind if you're running a low-level campaign and you want to give them cool stuff, but you can't hand them a, you know, a, a staff of the cosmos. You can't hand them the, the dwarven armor of, of whatever, blah 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 uh, there's good stuff at the low end of the chart, too. Just, just make sure you look for it, make sure you think about it, and, um, yeah. So, guys, in the comments below, let's keep the conversation going. It is called Let's Talk Tabletop, after all. In the comments below, let's hear about some of your favorite low-level treasures, or the favorite, like, piece of gear or equipment or something weird that your character got level four or lower and then that way everybody else can look down there and see cool stuff and get good ideas too so thank you to uh, curious commentator for the uh, for the topic to talk about and if you guys want to hear me talk about a certain thing or if you have a question that you want to hear about here on let's talk tabletop 
Put that in the comments below. Let's keep the conversation going. So until next time, keep gaming.